Inside this video right here, we're gonna talk about exactly the step-by-step -step method to pass your BLS CPR class. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about my best tips for you to remember to pass your CPR class easier. So what we're gonna be going over is gonna be first, in the upper box right here, we have what I call the chain, okay? The chain of survival in cardiac arrest. We're gonna go over that. Next, in this box over here, what we're gonna be talking about here is what is high quality CPR? Down here is gonna be our BLS algorithm. And then at the end, we're gonna throw in the, the quick tweak uh, for pediatric patients. So the first thing I wanna go over is what we call the chain of survival in cardiac arrest and what that actually looks like. So in my first box here, the first step is getting early recognition of an event. So what that means? What that means is knowing if someone looks like they're about to go into cardiac arrest and getting the action started, activating that emergency response system before they go into cardiac arrest, okay? Chest pain, difficulty breathing, lightheadedness, right? Okay, next, early CPR, what that means. Well, we talk about layperson CPRs, focus on hands-only CPR, compression-only CPR. So early CPR is a gold standard followed by early defib, okay? Now, let me just explain, the in simple terms, CPR and defib. CPR, think about it as the manual pump of the heart. When the heart works like it should, it's like an automatic pump. But when the heart stops working, your hands become the manual pump, okay? So we need that, because if the heart isn't pumped, there's no blood circulation, there's no oxygen, the patient isn't alive. What do I mean by defib? What does it mean to shock somebody with an AED? Okay, what does that mean? Well, what that means is this. Think about defib like a restart of the heart, a really bad rhythm. So we're gonna shock it to restart it back to where it should be, okay? So that's our early defib. These are your two biggest things to remember. Compressions and your AED. So the two most important things to harp on, okay? Next is gonna be post recess care. What does that mean? Very simply, that means taking care of the patient after the event so that they can get back to normal function. Okay, that's all it means. That is the change. Now, our next step here, we're gonna talk about it down here. Our next step in CPR, remember, this is, this is your high quality CPR or your high quality action steps with CPR. If you know this going into your CPR class, your BLS class, you're gonna be way ahead of the game. This is also a good reminder for anyone going to ACLS class too, to freshen your BLS, because they will make sure your BLS is sound, okay? Now, CPR. So CPR here, we have five to 10 second pulse check. So when you're checking someone's pulse, okay, for five to 10 seconds, no more than 10 seconds, you're also gonna assess their breathing at the same time. So I open the, the pulse, look at their chest and see if they're breathing or not, look at their mouth, mouth and chest. Okay, CPR. Now, what is high quality CPR? Well, high quality CPR is now 100 to 120 compressions per minute. The goal would be to get to really, really get to 120 is what we we're looking to do, okay? Now, the, the, this is gonna be a test question. What's the, the, what's the depth of compression? What's the, what's the, how far do we go down? So it's two to 2.4 inches for an adult and pediatric. An infant is 1.5. Talking more about high quality CPR, here are two quick tips, okay? And you wanna rewatch this video over and over again if you're prepping for a CPR class. Because once you get this down here on this video and you go to a CPR class, it's gonna be a cakewalk, okay? So two pearls I wanna give you here is one, is don't hyperventilate the patient. What that means. Ventilating a patient is us using what's called a BVM, 
a bag valve mask. It's a mask with, I call it, I call it a, uh, you can call it a pump grip or a push grip, okay? Basically what you're doing is you're pushing air in and out of the patient because they cannot breathe on their own. So you're using this BVM, this bag valve mask, to get oxygen in, I get oxygen in, carbon dioxide out for the patient because they can't do it on their own, okay? So the next thing you wanna remember is you wanna allow full chest recoil. So the chest should go full recoil and then down, full recoil and down, okay? Now, what's the big pearl that's gonna be on your CPR test? C-A-B, C-A-B, I'll say it again, C-A-B. C is for compressions, A is for airway, B is for breathing. That's your order of operations. So we first we focus on compressions, then airway later, then breathing, okay? Now let's go into the algorithm here. So this is for the adult patient, and then we're gonna move into what we should be doing for the pediatric patient. Ready? Here we go. All right. So the first thing first, anytime you see someone go, let's say you see someone go down, you think they might be in cardiac arrest, okay? The first thing you wanna do is make sure that you're safe as a rescuer or as a lay person, whoever's watching this video, okay? So make sure you're safe. So make sure that the scene around you is safe. That's just normal protocol, number one. Once you do that, the first thing you want to do, okay, think about it. If I was in a mall and I was sitting, uh, let's say I was eating food at the mall, and all of a sudden I see someone to my left go fall off a chair, go unresponsive, what is the first thing I'm going to do? Well, I'm going to look at my surroundings, make sure it's it's safe, okay, that it's a maybe a patient went unresponsive. What's the next thing I'm going to do? I'm going to call 911. There it is. Activate EMS. Okay. Well, if you are EMS, you're going to get activated. Same thing. Okay. Now, what's this? Get AED. If you're an EMT, you have an AED with you. Now, if you watch the event happen, like at a mall, what are you gonna do next? Okay, shout for help. Hey, someone get an AED. The scene's safe, now you can approach your patient. Hey, get an AED. You, well, you've called, you've called 911. You're gonna put that phone on speaker next to the patient so you can continue to talk to 911 on speaker. And then what are you gonna do? Then you're going to Hey, someone get an AD. You're at a, a public place. Okay, someone can get an AD. Now, what are you gonna do next? Because you've been trained. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna check pulse and breathing for about five to 10 seconds. Do not waste time, no more than 10 seconds, because what's our, what's our pearl here? Early CPR, early defib. In this little scenario I'm giving you here, okay, it's a role play, you've done early recognition, great job. But now you gotta do early CPR. So here's the crossroads here. So let's say you do a, uh, your pulse check, your breathing check right here, okay, carotid artery, okay, right in the side here, your trachea, okay. Where are we gonna go here? Check pulse breathing, five, 10 seconds. Okay, Evan, I got you with that, I'm gonna do that. So now, if let's say they have a pulse and they're breathing, okay, then good. They still had an event where they went unresponsive or they collapsed, we still need to call 911. Stay with the patient and make, monitor them, make sure they're okay, okay? Now, what if the patient in this scenario right here has, has a pulse? Okay, well, if they got a pulse, they're not in cardiac arrest, but they're not breathing, or they're gasping, but what are you gonna do? That's where you have the rescue breath. So, in that, in that scenario, okay, think about it. That scenario, we don't, we're not doing compressions because they have a pulse. If somebody has a pulse, the automatic pump is still working. We don't need the manual pump. So we, don't, we move on. Well, now we got now, oh, the airway breathing's messed up. I can help, I'll let's help them with that, right? So that's what we're doing over here. One breath in five to six seconds. That gives you about 10 to 12 breaths a minute, okay? Do not hyperventilate. So you want to be like, one, two, three, four, five, six, even slower than that. We'll do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, and continue, okay? Now the pearl here, all my pearls are starred, is if you see this patient and you think there might be an opiate overdose, you wanna give that patient Narcan, okay? And there's many different ways to give Narcan, but I can tell you one of the most common routes that people use in you know, all walks of life is either an auto injector into the thigh or a nasally in the nose, okay? Just wanna let you know about that, all right? 
Now, next thing we're going to talk about here is going to be what happens if they're in a cardiac arrest. Hey, what kind of patient, what kind of patient is in cardiac arrest? They're not breathing and there's no pulse. Okay, think about it. If the heart isn't pumping blood and you're not breathing, you're not getting oxygen, and the body, the body cells all across their arms, legs, and organs aren't getting any oxygen because the heart isn't pumping any blood. That means you're in a cardiac arrest. Now we start CPR, okay? So here we go with CPR. So we're gonna do 30 compressions, okay? For all types of, every adult CPR is 30 and two, every type. So 30 compressions and then two breaths, okay? Remember the one breath, 35, six? Remember the, now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do 30 compressions and then you're gonna have two of here, right here, okay? Now think about it. 30 compressions, one breath every five to six seconds, okay? Gotcha, okay? And don't forget the AED. So the AED has to arrive, okay? So we're gonna go right to our early CPR and then our early DFib. See, we're following our little chart here. So now the AED arrives. You, you call that person out to get the AED, the AED now arrives. Well, what you wanna do is get the AED on immediately and follow the prompts, but continue doing your compressions until the AED prompts you to stop, okay? Whether it's gonna deliver a shock or not, okay? Now, two pathways here. If the AED says shock, you're gonna shock the patient and make sure everyone's clear, you're clear, go ahead and shock that patient, okay? And then as soon as it's done and it says resume, go right back to your compressions and then here's your cycle. Every two minutes, every two minutes CPR cycles. And the AED is gonna prompt you as you go. So at this point, once the AED's here, it's like having a coach on scene, okay? Now if there's no shock, you should continue doing CPR with this, method, with this method right here of 30 and two until somebody arrives. Okay everyone, so what I wanna talk about now is the slight changes we get with a pediatric patient. Let's talk about it. So normally you gotta know that pediatrics are gonna breathe more than a adult. So their respiratory rate is higher. A pediatric respiratory rate could be like 20 to 30 for example, okay? Versus an adult 12 to 20. Now, in this case in cardiac arrest, we're gonna do a ventilation rate of three to five versus the adult five to six. There's your ch big change. So this is gonna be on your test guaranteed. We're talking about the next thing that's different is the compression rate. So one rescuer pediatric, 30 to two. So if we go through it, the adult, 30 to two always. Pediatric, 30 to two, one rescuer. Pediatric, 15 and two, for two rescuers, and that's how you're gonna remember your CPR. Now, with pediatrics, the algorithm is still the same. Scene safety, call 911 or your EMS, okay? Get an AED, right, or shot for an AED, okay? Check pulse and breathing, five, 10 seconds. If they're okay with pulse and breathing, monitor to help arrive. If the breathing's bad, gasping or no breathing, but they have a pulse, just do your rescue, okay? Remember, adult, five to six, P three to five, okay? So right here we have, well, what if they're in cardiac arrest? Hey, what's cardiac arrest again? No pulse, no breathing. So that means we need to manual pump our hands. So we're gonna do compressions. Hey, what's adult? 30 to two. Hey, what's pediatric? One rescuer, one person, 30 to two. Hey, what's pediatric for two rescuers? 15, 15 to two, gotcha, okay? AED, same stuff. Hey, before you go, if you're one of these three people, maybe you're getting ready for EMT school, advanced EMT school, or paramedic school. Maybe right now you're struggling inside of one of those three schools, trying to understand the why behind what you're doing. Or maybe you're studying for your NRMT boards right now, and you're trying to find the best study tool available. Well, I have a solution for all three of those situations. So this program has over 160 videos, plus access to a private student group where you can ask me questions while you are studying as well and interact with your fellow student members. So if you want to learn more and get instant lifetime access before the price increase, click down below in the description. And everyone, I will see you tomorrow. I'll see you there. Cap Oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these, 
all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it it's a great way to convey the material it's a conversational approach giving examples giving some real world studies giving the philosophy behind why i want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that, and I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.